Good morning folks, welcome to Welsh Woodsman Outdoors channel. This morning, it's a Sunday morning, I thought I can't get to the woods now because um, we're currently under national lockdown in Wales and I can't get out. Weather's been pretty crap this weekend, not that you could tell now because the sun has just come out, but it was pouring down just now. Um, I thought I'd get some filming done for you and I thought you've noticed on my previous videos or quite a few videos lately, I'm a bit of a motor fan. So I thought, well, since I can't get out to the woods, I thought I'd show you my mora collection. So I got an array of mora and I've spread out in front of me here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just show you if I can remember which models they are exactly, the numbers and things, but I'll show you the models and stuff that I've got and use. Um, I have got other ones. I've got my oldest one I can't find at the moment when I had a quick look for it. But um, we'll go through... I'll start off now with the carving stuff. So if I bring you up slightly so I don't have to crouch. Right then, let me think. This was, you've seen this in a previous video, this was my first uh, Mora 120, my first Mora carving knife. Now, I know you've seen a lot of like other carvers and this is worn down almost to a toothpick and things like that. I've done a lot of carving with this knife, but I have other carving knife so this isn't my only user that's why it's lasted so well comes with a basic um, handle well there we are it's a frost sheath and a motor blade but I mean they all I think they all merged years ago so that's the 120 then I went up from that I went into other makes obviously you know this is a motor video but that's a Svantage Jav um, knife went into other makes like that but then I came back to Mora and I started using this and then I picked, where are we? I picked this one up. That's a sheath I made for it out of birch bark. I found it in uh, a boxer kit a while ago and it just fits my 106 perfectly and doesn't come off at all. So that's the 106 with a longer blade. These are laminate blades so they've got a harder steel in the center. I don't know if you'll pick that up on the camera. You may not do if I get out of the shot. No, it's too close. Anyway, you, you may pick the difference in colouring on the blade when it's been sharpened. These are a laminate blade, so it's like a softer steel, which sandwiches the harder steel in the centre. This probably has been my most, most used mora out of all of them because, excuse me, this is the one I carve with all the time. But I say all the time until I picked this one up the 105 now this is the same length blade as oh, looking at it it's slightly longer actually unless I've sharpened that one down but it's there we are it's slightly longer than the 106 this is the 105 but this birch handle even with these flares on I love it this is an absolute joy to carve with I've got other carvers made by expensive makers and things like that, but this is pretty much the one I use now all the time. That was my first spoon knife. This is, oh god, I can't even remember these models. I'm not even going to guess, I'll put it on the screen if I can find it. There's a spider hanging down, sorry. Um, when I started out spoon carving, there was no internet and things, so... I didn't even know about these and you couldn't get them anyway so I can't even remember when I picked this one up this has gone 20 years ago and uh, I used this for a long time until I got a Svantage Jav one I think which obviously I enjoyed using more this for me this was the failing with Mora was the spoon knife the carving knives are absolutely brilliant the spoon knives I know they've changed the model is it the 164 that maybe that's coming into my nose. So this is probably around that 160 something as well. Um, they need to still need to do a bit more research into their the spoon. Um, yeah, the spoon knife or the crook knife. Or sorry, um, they need to do a bit more research into that. They're a bit crap. They're great to start out. Don't get me wrong. I used this for years, 
until I got better and then realised there's better out there so I never really used this much. I, that was the first case that I made, yeah it's not great. It's just sort of a piece of, a piece of um, this was marine ply and that was just quarter inch ply on top as a cover, two dowels. Yes, there's safer ways of doing it but that was the first one I did. So that's another carver I've got, I just bought the 120 blade. So exactly the same as that, but then I made the handle myself out of a piece of cherry, which I've now um, since made all my uh, tools that I've done, the blades that I bought of other makers or whatever, it's all come out of the same block of cherry, and then just a sheath I made for it. So we're going to move up to now um, the Mora Classic style. So this now is, this is the new model Mora Classic. It's just, I don't know why I'm squinting. <laughs> so this is just a newer model of just these little ones. I think this was a, this is the one. And this is the new classic number two. This hasn't had much use. I've literally only shaved a couple of sticks at home. You know, I haven't even given it a proper testing yet, but the handle fits great in the hand. It's really nice. So that needs to get out. This you'll recognise from um, a previous video. This is the Moto 510. This is the one I modified. It's probably four or five videos ago on my list. Um, it's had quite a quite a lot of hits on it and quite a, quite a few good comments. But there's a modification to the sheath. If you want to see that, you need to go back to that previous video and watch it. Right, the next one. You've got the stainless companion and this is an old model of had this years this has done a lot of trips out on the kayak fishing with me um i've been up to scotland with it and i i think from memory i took this out to panama as well when we did the desert island course of wood smoke this is a stainless steel and only when i checked it just now i got a tiny bit of corrosion up at the tip but i've used this in so many times in a marine environment and it just doesn't corrode it's great bit of work it does take a cracking edge I recently bought then the newer style companion it's a slightly thicker blade this is a 2.5 mil and this is made of 12c27 steels so this is really good quality stainless that has not been used in anger at all yet so this these I'm getting now into my most used uh, more bushcraft knives I've had this a long time, you can see by this style of the handle, they don't do it like this anymore. They do it this style handle. But this is my companion carbon steel. And this I think was 1.8 to 2mm. Takes a terrific edge. I used this uh, in a video when I went camping with the lads about 6 weeks ago. This is on a video about 3 or 4 videos ago. And I carved and everything with it. Love that knife. Then this is the heavy duty. This is had an absolute batter in. I've used this on uh, numerous trips. Um, I think it was on my fifth video on my YouTube channel. I carved a coffee scoop out of a piece of cherry and I done it all with this knife. 3.2mm high carbon steel. Takes a terrific edge. I've ground the back down so it'll take fire steel. And you can't fault it. I mean, you're picking these up for less than £20. I'm going to leave that there because I'm going to talk about that later. Now, I'm going into the thicker steels now. These are like the 3.2mm. So, this is the Mora Bushcraft Black. Bushcraft Black. I can't speak today. This is now a 3.2mm high carbon steel. Sharp ground back edge, thick of fire steel. This was the Mora blade that turned my views of Mora knife around up until I bought this blade um, I didn't really bother with Mora's apart from my carvers I didn't bother them at all I just thought they were cheap crap I'll be honest about that I thought they were cheap crap everybody used to say yo can you recommend a, a knife everyone's Mora knife Mora knife and I thought get lost get yourself a decent knife nice custom knife buy some bushcraft you know, things like that, Ben Offord, Rob Evans, anything like that, that's a quality knife. I bought this. 
and this came with um, factory ground edge with a tiny micro bevel on it. Uh, I got rid of that, I flat ground it and then I went out and did a, lot, a couple of nights out camping trip. A little bit of corrosion there but that's okay. I took this out, oh my god, changed my views and it utterly changed it, uh, well for good then basically. I love the handle on this. This is, makes beautiful feather sticks, fantastic with a feather rod. I think they're like £35. I can't see exactly, I think it was like £35 or whatever. This isn't the survival model with a fire steel, but I'm not worried about that. Fantastic knife. You want something a bit thicker. I mean, you can put this pretty much through anything that a full tang. It's pretty much the tang is almost up to there anyway, so it's almost a full tang. It's like a three quarter. Absolutely nothing wrong with this knife. It's brilliant. This then, the next one, is exactly the same profile. But this then is the, um, the stainless. This is a 12C27 Sandvik steel again. 3.2 mil sharp on back edge, same profile profile handle, but in a stainless, you know, all weather kind of knife, and you're not gonna miss that sheath if you put that down anywhere. Right, if I do point this one out first, this is the cans ball. This is the Mora cans ball. You've still got the Scandi grind, but it continues to grind all the way along. But they've got this then, this thinner ground stock at the front, so it's almost like a second flat grind secondary bevel. This then is what I used when I did the um, the Gawa camping, uh, the fishing off the worm a few videos ago. This is what I used to prep the fish. This is a stainless again, a Sandvik stainless. This is, I th I'm not sure, look to look at, it's about 2.5 mil. This is a really nice knife to use. I haven't given it a proper going over. I think I took this to Sweden last year as well, but I didn't tend to, didn't use it that much. Still, this is the burnt orange model. This is the first Garberg, the stainless version. I bought this the day they came out. I was really looking forward to it. Everyone was complaining about why, how can you possibly charge a hundred pound for a motor knife when you know the other ones are twenty pound. Everybody mourned about it. They've all changed their views now. This is a full tang, full tang blade. Um, I think it's 14 C28N or whatever. This is a stainless steel. This has had an absolute battering with me as well. I've smashed this through logs. I've done everything with it. It's a bloody great knife. I love the Garberg. There was one thing it was lacking was I really wanted it in a carbon version. Which is when I got hold of this. I've just put it in the multi-mount sheath now, um, just so you can see what it looks like in it. This is the carbon version of the Garberg, and I prefer this. This now, if you look at it, it's very similar to the Bushcraft Black. The Bushcraft Black is a bit more of a spear point, whereas this one is more poco style with the sweeper. I prefer that shape, the spear point blade of the Bushcraft Black. And I love the handle on the Bushcraft Black, but this, oh, this just sits, it's very Poco style, it sits beautiful in the hand. So, if you want to get a, if you wanted a knife that's going to last you a long time, folks, <laughs> that's the one I'd say to go for. Yeah, they're not cheap, I think they're about 80, 85 pound. They were more when they came out. Fantastic, I love, the, absolutely love that knife. Oh, I forgot about this one on the end. That's the motor pathfinder. Basically the bushcraft black with a six, I think it's a six and a quarter inch blade, high carbon. Still got the sharp ground flat edge. I've used this in one of my early videos when I was camping with the lads and I, first time I tried my lavu out. So this needs to have a video on its own again, I think. So I might need to get out with that. Okay, so I just want to add this thing into the video. I, I mentioned earlier I couldn't find one of my oldest ones. Um, this is, I think, the oldest one I've got, the, the one I've had for the longest. And this is the old Frosts, classic number one, you can see there. This is years old, this has had a lot of use. I found it whilst looking for this one, which I forgot to put in as well, which is the Companion Spark which 
hasn't been out that long. This has been in a video with me. I've done kind of done reviews on this as well. I'm very impressed with this. This is another 2.5 mil uh, 12C27 stainless ground flat, um, nice sharp 90 degree on the back for a ferro rod, which it houses in the handle. I'm very impressed with this knife. Um, I'm not sure if Mora does, but if they don't, I would like them to do this same blade with the ground flat, but a plain handle without the fire steel in it, the ferro rod. It sharpens to a lovely edge and it's great well i've carved with it you've seen in my previous videos go back and check those out and anyway that's the companion spark i think they retail at about 28 29 pound in the uk very impressed with it really nice 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 knife to use okay so i forgot to point these out earlier in the video this is the moro eldress now when these came out i bought this one straight away is when it came out as well these are an absolutely brilliant little knife when it first came out a lot of people slated it because of the size they were saying basically like what can you do with that this has had a couple of trips out to Sweden I do the food prep with it you can clean fish with it you can make feathers with it you can light your fire steel with it I think it's only a 1.8 mil but this is a stainless the 12 c 27 again really good quality I mean, I just put it on um, a piece of paracord I found out in, when I was out in Sweden and I put my Perry whistle on it and it's a, just a comfortable, comfortable little blade to carry on the knife. Put a bit of uh, bicycle in the tube around as a fire lighter and then in and out, really comfortable knife to use. If you've got big hands, I haven't got massive hands but yeah, it's, it's small compared to my palm, then it'll be easier for me to demonstrate on the burnt orange model because I had to have an orange one to go with it as well if it's too small for you to hold then turn it back to front put it back in the sheath and I've got a big handle I saw that on a video the other day and I just thought well, by damn I didn't even think of that they actually advertise it on their videos of these now but that gives you more girth maybe maybe handier if you're wearing a pair of gloves in the snow to have more grip but anyway there's the burnt orange model and that was the first one I had was the red one but it's had a lot of use and abuse <laughs> it's still great it's easy to sharpen as well now more I do other things as well I picked this up the other day because I saw um, I can't remember his name now I think it's Paul Woodland Crafts on Instagram he makes a lot of cooks and things well he was using one of these the more push knife this is in the new classic style and he used one of these and I thought I'm going I need to get one so this is going to help me with my cooks are carving anyway I got one last thing to show you now with regards to Mora knives um, when people say um, they're cheap knives or whatever and they, and they basically slag them off and a lot of people will I was one of them I'm, I'm a total Mora convert now there's one good thing about these motor knives is when they come off the um, the line in the factory they're all the same they're all exactly the same handles the same blade and everything now if you like your custom knives and you want to have a one off then fair enough but if for argument's sake I was to lose this blade this one this is a bushcraft black I've lost 35 pounds yes I'll be upset I've lost a blade but if I'd lost a three, four hundred, five hundred pound plus custom knife, easily come out of the sheath in a fall, canoe goes over, it's gone, down the bottom of a lake, whatever, it's gone. I'd break my heart. I would literally be, oh my God, I've lost so much money. I can't replace it. It was a one-off. I'm not saying one-offs are bad. I love them. It's lovely to have a custom knife on your belt and to use it as well. But then if you're going to get something like this and you want it to take it up a notch for argument's sake and make it a little bit prettier get yourself a, a nice sheath so you can see there the badge this is um a bushcraft black sheath that i picked up second hand of paul jones uh, the um the owner basically i don't know what you call it but the guy who started the bushcraft group and Bushcraft Cymru, which I'm one of the admins of. Picked that up off him in, a, in a, a trade. So that's a Bushcraft Black. 
leather sheaf made by uh, Toby Hobby of Red Kite Leatherworks. Nice one, Toby. It's a beautiful sheath. I've also got other sheaths from him. So, check that out. There's his stamp, make a stamp. Red Kite Leatherworks. There we are. Riveted on the back, all stitched. That's for my Garberg. Obviously, it fits both my Garbergs and my Morikans ball. But it's the carbon steel that sits in there. It's lovely. And I love, I much prefer dangler sheaths like that. So that when it's on my belt and I can sit down, it can swivel out of the way. It's much more comfortable to carry. And then last but not least, one of my main users. Like I said, I've used this a lot. And I love the heavy duty, but I think I prefer this one, the, the basic command, yeah. This needed a sheath. So, Toby posted on his Instagram page um, that he was doing a lockdown deal thing and he was given a COVID-19, 19% off his sheath. So I thought, I'm going to have to have one. And I want one for the companion because then I can put all my different size, different colours and things, companions into it. Check out that bad boy. Yeah, it's my fire steel that I made a long time ago. Look at that. I can make leather sheaths than I have. I just what's the point? Look how much look how much better quality that is. Now that's why I was saying is fifty well the basic companion what fourteen pound. Use it, abuse it, break it, smash the handle, whatever, lose it, so be it. Buy another one, it's exactly the same. Fits into a nice quality leather sheath again with a dangler but this time I wanted a fire steel I don't tend to have a fire steel on my sheath I don't see the point to be honest with you it's I use my knife and it hangs on my belt and using it all day I might use this once keep the fire going all day and then the bloody fire steals in my way all the time but then I thought well I don't tend to do it often so all I'm saying is I love Mora don't really like the plastic sheaths although the Garberg ones are a lot more secure they're not coming out of there I do like them that I'll keep the stainless one in because then if I'm working in water and fishing whatever I can just rinse that out but well it's a plug for you Toby beautiful leather work you can't go wrong red kite leather works check them out on insta make some stunning stuff so anyway I hope you've enjoyed that video just turn you a bit hope you've enjoyed the video sorry I couldn't be uh, out and about and doing stuff in the woods and pretty scenery. You've got the bird song, we've got my chickens out the back making a racket. But I'm in the shed, I'm locked down, can't get out. I think I may have to do a couple more of these videos. Um, I could do one on custom knives I've got. So if you fancy watching one of my custom knife collection, obviously I haven't got the connection Rob has got. He's fanatical about them. But I could easily do you a video on my custom knives and also a video on my axes and saws and then I'll think I'll do one on my carving collection which uh, I think if you watch my videos for the carving I think you'll be impressed at some of the kit they've got so that's it I think that'll be enough for me to tie a video together for you I hope you've enjoyed it um, I've probably got more mores um, dotted around the house and in toolboxes and things like that but I just wanted to get the one, like the main users out that I to show you. Um, other than that, thank you for watching. If you're not, a, if you're not a subscriber, I, I'm pleased that you watched it all the way through. Please subscribe though and share my video to other platforms by all means. I'm trying to build the channel. My numbers are going up slowly, but they need to go up quicker. And other than that, thank you for watching. There's more coming soon. I think the next one's possibly going to be axes and saws. Stay tuned.